Yeah, 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 yeah. Fourth quarter boy sports. It is the illustrious Professor Lake. And we're back in the building. Had to come out the laboratory. Did a little bit of research. And today we're going to talk about Chicago Bears, organized team activities, and Matt Nagy's first experience as a head coach during this time with the Chicago Bears. So let's jump right into it. You know, we're going to cover a little bit about Mitch Trubisky, and then we're going to talk a little bit about this offense, and we're going to go into Mark Helfrich's mind and what he adds to the, the offense. So Matt Nagy was uh, asked about how the offense is doing and picking up the system, how, how they're performing uh, during the OTAs. He says, there are mistakes, but at the same time, they're, they're cleaning up the mistakes. He says the quarterback room is very helpful to Mitchell Trubisky and the rest of the offense when this com- when it comes down to getting quality reps, you know. So I think the fact that you got Chase Daniels and Tyler Bray working with some of those second and third stringers, it really helps out Matt Nagy and evaluating talent and seeing who's really picking up the system and who, you know, might be jumping up the depth chart. Real quick, we're going to talk about, you know, the question about the national anthem news and the NFL decision to require teams uh, not to allow kneeling during the national anthem. They will allow you not to come out and not demonstrate, you know, respect or honor for the flag during that time. Maybe I said that wrong. Well, you know, they will allow you to protest, but just not on their venue. And it's their venue. And I, I get it. I understand that. You know, if you were the owner of Best Buy and, you know, people can't protest in your lobby, but they could go in public and or, or they could show their protest in a different way. And I think it's fair. OK, I think it's fair. Might get beat up for it. But at the same time, I don't want players to be punished for not coming out and standing up for the national anthem. So. You know, leave leave your remark in the comment section. I'm definitely interested in talking about it. I try to stay, you know, focused on football, though. So let's move right along, man. You know, it's a touchy topic, man. I don't even want to touch it. But um, Nagy was also asked about uh, Smith and Daniels, Roquan Smith and James Daniels playing second string. He quoted as saying, he's quoted as saying that they must earn their position. And later on down the road, they will respect the decision to make them work as second teamers to see how veterans work. And that's respectable. I like that a lot about Nagy. He really wants to develop accountability, leadership, teamwork, you know, and um, just good football character when it comes to, you know, contractual decisions, uh, depth chart decisions. I like his stance and I like the direction he's going with in in regards to this matter. But um, he also says that he's encouraged by the offensive growth. He says Kansas City took five years to really get good and master the system. And um, I'm not thinking it's going to take five years to really start seeing the Bears improve and win games. But by, you know, year three, four and five, you're going to start seeing you know, a little more control, a little more uh, play with ease. You know, when we play Green Bay and we see Aaron Rodgers drop back, you know, he barely looks like he's sweating. He looks so comfortable. He looks like he doesn't have a care in the world. He's just flicking the ball off his wrist and people are catching it in the corner of the end zone right, right after the first down marker. You know, he could do no wrong because he's mastered the system. And it takes a little while, but I think we'll benefit from it. I'm willing to be patient with Matt Nagy and Mark Helfrich. I'm looking for growth, though, nonetheless, because we definitely have an improvement in the receiver position. And that alone uh, should show, you know, an improvement in our offensive gameplay. They asked about Leonard Floyd and Allen Robinson's Uh, progression in their recovery from the injuries last season and they're working you know I really think that they're probably healthy at this point but they have to say that they're working on their rehabilitation 
in order to justify them not participating in every single drill. But I like the idea that they're playing it safe. Whatever they can gain um, as far as picking up the offense. And I think Leonard Floyd's in a good place seeing that they have the same defense, but Allen Robinson, on the other hand, as far as picking up the offense and uh, getting in the groove, I think he could get that uh, during their two weeks of uh, two-a-days in August. And I think they really want to play it safe and get their work in around that time of the season. And I don't have a problem with that. Um, someone asked about Deion Sims for some reason, but um, it was funny to me because, you know, Matt Nagy just jumped out there and says, you know, it's obvious Deion Sims is not a downfield threat, and he knows that. <laughs> that was hilarious to me. But Sims is respected in the locker room. He helps out other tight ends and the coaches like that. And I think that, you know, because he's a good blocker, They'll, he'll make the team, you know. They would have cut him by now or earlier, uh, you know, in the year if they really wanted to cut ties. But I think that he does add something to the locker room. And also the fact that we do run the ball, you know, he'll be somebody in there. Even if we do two, two uh, tight end sets, I think he'll be one of the guys that uh, are going to be getting a lot of reps at blocking, and that's going to benefit Howard and Cole. Playbook has hundreds of plays, you know, and uh, and what they're doing right now is really finding out what really works, you know, what the look is going to be against certain defenses and how they can put the language together for these players to execute on game day. Uh, you know, the reporters were probing and prodding to get as much information as they could about how the offense is picking up Matt Nagy's system, I believe that they're a work in progress. And that's not a bad thing, but as the year rolls along, the closer we get to the first game of the season, you know, they need to have, you know, a, a nice selection of plays that they could go to and understand that everybody knows their role, you know, their landmarks. They know audibles, they understand these plays to the T uh, so they can execute during the season. That is very important. So with these hundreds of plays that he has in his playbook, you know, I wonder how that's going to break down uh, the closer we get to uh, game one. And, um, you know, it's just my opinion that I think that that's where they're going to build from. So right now they're doing a lot of diamond cutting, you know, they're going to get this thing right, and then they're going to build on from there. You know, um, Mark, Mark Helfrich also did an interview, and uh, he also says that the Vic Fangio defense is challenging the offense. Again, they're veterans on that defense. They're in the same system, and they know what they're doing, and they're playing a lot faster than the offense is right now. What they're doing is installing plays for the strengths of their, their athletes. And they just wanna be able to put them in better positions to make plays. It sounds like Nagy's playbook is so versatile that you know you could just call a play for a player and know that it's gonna be executed just by the look of the defense ahead of time. You know, that's pretty masterful, but the quicker these players pick up the foundation, the more they'll be able to add on the more dangerous uh, the offense can be. Who wants players to be interchangeable so that, you know, you can fool the defense. You can give them different looks. You can move people around. And that's only beneficial for the offense when you could, when you could cloak what you're really trying to do. You could show certain formations and the defense has no idea what you're going to run out of. Because you run so many plays out the same formation you know, that's going to be difficult to find keys. You're going to have to look for tendencies on second and third down. What play are they going to run on second and third down? You know, it's, it's so much of a breakdown that they're really going to have to give their uh, quality control guys a lot of money to figure out what these offenses are doing to prepare a game plan for, uh, for defenses coming to play your offense. He says Mitch Trubisky is competitive. Uh, you know, Mitch makes mistakes, but he's a leader and he's correcting other guys. 
He said that the offense is totally built by Matt Nagy, and he'll take credit for anything negative that happens. And again, I just want to reiterate that, you know, when asked about describing the the system of Matt Nagy and what the offense looks like and what they're trying to do, the major point that I'm getting is that the scheme caters to their playmakers. So at any given time, depending on down and distance, what Mitch matches they may have on the field could dictate the play. And at the same time, they're going to have seven different plays per one play. And then they got so many different plays out of one formation. It's going to be, it's going to be nasty, y'all. You know, it, it's, it's exciting. I'm really hoping that the Bears offense can pick up the pace and learning uh, their assignments and understanding the concepts and, uh, you know, get to the point to where they're not making the mistakes and they're playing a lot quicker, a lot smoother, a lot more relaxed. As far as the defense, it looks like they're rolling. It seems like they got a lot of competition in there and they're all playing at a high level. That's a positive. That's a positive. In my opinion, I, I like what I'm seeing. I feel like the offense is learning. This may be the first time they're actually challenged mentally, you know, in understanding what this NFL game is like when you have to you have to understand different concepts and how to attack defenses and actually understanding the options that Matt Nagy is laying out for you. It's really on Mitch Trubisky and how fast can he pick up the play calls? How fast can he understand the different plays that he could call out of one play depending on what defensive look he is seeing? I'm curious to see how quickly he is able to understand the different Mitch matches that he may have on the field. Oh man, you know. But I think that he's doing all he can to understand the offense, understand how to call plays, and execute these plays, and also become a better educator and teach it to wide receivers and teach it to the linemen. You know, that'll be the next step for Mitch. So the sooner he picks up this offense, uh, the more he will flourish as a Chicago Bear quarterback. But you know who it is, Fourth Quarter Boy Sports. I am the illustrious Professor Lake. Like, comment, share, subscribe, 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 subscribe. So, with that in mind, holla at your boy.